You know what the world needs a lot more of right now? Political predictions, because there's just not enough of those floating around on the internet. So with that said, let's today predict who's going to control the U.S. Senate once the 2024 elections have mercifully come and gone. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Well, you're now watching Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Might as well go ahead and take the time, the half second it takes to subscribe for the most conservative commentary online. It's entirely possible you hear a little bit of background noise today. I have the windows open here in studio and uh, the birds are chirping outside. It's a beautiful October day here in Virginia and uh, there may be a rooster crowing out there somewhere as well. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this uh, map. We're going to start by predicting our safe seats. There are 34 up, I believe. Um, we're going to start with your obvious blues, everything on the West Coast, everything on the East Coast, uh, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, New Jersey, Maryland, obviously Vermont and Maine are technically independents, Bernie Sanders and Angus King, but they're obviously Democrats. Um, New York is going to be safe uh, Democrat. Let's see if I'm missing a safe Democrat here. New Mexico is going to be safe Democrat. I've heard some rumors that that's going to be close. I don't think so. So meanwhile, for safe Republican, we have Indiana, we have Tennessee, Missouri, Mississippi, West Virginia, where Joe Manchin is not running for re-election. Jim Justice is probably going to win by between 30 and 40 points. Uh, both of Nebraska's Senate seats, Wyoming, North Dakota. I missed Michi uh, Minnesota earlier for safe blue. Uh, Amy Klobuchar will win her Minnesota Senate seat by a safe margin. And then for Republicans, Utah. So GOP is at 48 seats. With when all it's uh, said and done with the safe seats, the GOP is at 48. The Democrats are uh, at 41. So let's start with some of these uh, swing states here. We are going to use a um, <clears throat> we are going to use some polling today. You know, I don't always consult polling, but we're going to today for some of these closer seats. Uh, our margins, as with the presidential election map prediction, which if you've not seen my most recent one, it should be linked in a card either now in the corner or at the end of the video. So go watch my most recent. Presidential election map prediction. We're going to use the same margins as we did last week. Tilt is less than one and a half, one and a half points or less. A lean margin will be 1.6 to 3.5 points. Likely will be 3.6 to 8 points. Safe will be 8.1 and up. So without further ado, let's start with one of my favorite states in terms of uh, ones I've been predicting for the past uh, little while. Nevada, as you know. Unfortunately, things here are not looking great for Sam Brown. Uh, the Republican nominee there. There's not been as uh, a whole lot of polling there, I feel like, compared to some of the other states maybe, but I see reason that we've had a decent amount. Um, I've heard and I kind of have noticed that there doesn't seem to be quite as much polling coming out, big polls that you hear about a lot, as much as uh, you would expect potentially, especially in the presidential race. But anyway, uh, let's see here. So, yeah, you see it's not looking good. He's down by 7.5. Uh, on average, the most recent one shows him trailing to Jackie Rosen by eight. And here's the deal. Uh, Sam Brown is not going to lose to Jackie Rosen by eight points or by seven or by 13. I think it's going to look much closer to the Atlas Intel poll here of two. Um, however, I don't think it's going to go the GOP's way like I've been predicting. Uh, my most recent map, I had Nevada tilting toward Harris by 0 0.2, 0 0.3 points which means I think you could very well see Brown trail over a point behind Trump. So I think you could see a lean margin here for Jackie Rosen, a win. Uh, as you know, I've been predicting Nevada to flip red for a while, and that is ending today. I uh, predict Nevada to go to uh, Jackie Rosen on the low end of lean. We're probably looking at just over one and a half points, one and a half to two points, I would imagine. Uh, next up, let's look at Florida. Jumping across the country here, not a whole lot to see here. Um, Rick Scott, he has holds a comfortable four-point lead. You see the polling's kind of all over the place. Plus one, plus two for him. Uh, plus nine for, for him in one poll. And that was a New York Times Siena poll, too, I'm seeing. Uh, the Marist poll, over uh, over 1,200 likely voters. Uh, and you see he only leads by two. But Rick Scott's not going to lose this seat. Um, it is certainly a lean Republican seat. Uh, I think Trump wins this in the general election by eight to ten points, somewhere in there. So for the purpose of this, we're going to say it's a likely um, Republican seat. Uh, I think Rick Scott's going to win it somewhere between five and six, maybe even as high as seven points, but it should be a likely Republican seat. They're not going to lose it. Let's move to the other big one, Texas, in terms of size, that is. Uh, Texas, 
Ted Cruz defending his seat for a third try, I believe, versus Colin Allred. Uh, not a lot to worry about for him here. Polling looks good. Uh, he came pretty close to losing to uh, Beto, or at least closer than you would want. In 2018, that's not going to happen the same with Allred here, even though he does seem to be kind of... um, uh, He's not a horrible candidate, I don't think, for the Dems there, but he's not going to win this. And so, uh, yeah, Cruz's seat... I'm not going to say he wins by a safe margin because Texas has been a bit closer in recent years, safe being 8.1 and higher, but he'll win on the higher side of likely, I would say. Probably looking again about probably same, about the same margin in Florida, maybe even a little more, maybe 7 to 8 points there for Cruz in Texas. Just like that, the GOP is at 50 uh, seats, and so you're looking at this and thinking, surely out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 seats, all of which the Democrats are defending, I believe, Surely the GOP flips at least one of them, to which I say never count on the GOP to not screw things up. So let's get into it. Uh, let's look at Virginia, uh, my place of residence. Virginia, our nominee, Hong Kao, taking on Tim Kaine. Not looking good. Uh, he's trailing by 12 points. And yes, I've uh, been extremely disappointed with the cam- with the campaign Kao is running. He's not spending any money in this area, hardly. He's not even spending time. Uh, he's certainly not going to the real deep parts of southwest Virginia. I'm closer to central Virginia, maybe on the edge of southwest here in the Lynchburg area. And, uh, yeah, he's not been around here at all, which is how you got to win. Republicans for years have tried to campaign in Nova around D.C. because that's where the people are, but there are no Republicans there. It never works. They always try it, and hence they're helping them to keep losing Virginia in federal elections. So uh, this is going to go to Tim Kaine by, I hate to admit it, but now a safe margin. Um, I believe Tim Kaine is going to... Put this in the 9 to 10 point range. I think Cal at this point would be lucky to keep it under double digits. So it could be a lot closer. If, if he was running a good campaign, he could probably keep it under 5. Uh, track closer to where I think Trump will do in Virginia, which is probably a lean margin for Harris, maybe even a sh- uh, uh, likely, a lower likely. But uh, yeah, Tim Kaine's going to win this comfortably. So let's move on here. I'm going to get rid of some of these tabs. There we go. Uh, Eric Hovde versus... Tammy Baldwin in Wisconsin Senate. Now, this race has really intrigued me because the most recent poll from Insider Advantage shows uh, Baldwin just up one, the three or four. I want to say she's running for her fourth term there. Uh, or maybe she's maybe that's the one that retired. Regardless, it's a Democrat versus the Republican there. And um, you see here the recent polling. It was looking good for her. We're going to go down and see the trend here. Yeah, you see how she's held a pretty, uh, had held a pretty consistent lead. We're talking seven-ish points. Uh briefly there Hovde closes the gap that starts to expand again she's leading by 6.2 6.7 6.4 then the gap starts to close as of late as we get closer to election day not that surprising but it's just a 3.4 point lead for her Trump I think right now in my most recent map uh spoiler alert I'm going to give away one state what I predicted here Wisconsin I predicted as a toss-up I still think this favors the Democrat just because of how they performed in recent years statewide in Wisconsin but if Trump wins the state then the Senate candidate, uh, Eric Hovde, is a very decent shot. I think he's a decent candidate for them, from what I've heard. So, again, I'm not in Wisconsin. I've said before, it's very hard to predict how certainly local and even state races are going when you're not actually in that state and have a feel for the environment. That's why I can give an educated opinion on Hong Kong versus Tim Kaine, because I'm in Virginia. But Wisconsin, from what I'm seeing, I'm going to go tilt Democrat. Could be very close, though. Probably will be very close. Uh, Eric Hovde might very well pull it out. As I said with the presidential election that video too, this is again all assuming it's legit. Uh, one of the reasons I actually want to see Trump win the most is actually not because of he's so great or anything. Uh, I know that's controversial, but it's not just because of that. I think I would really like to see him win because I would like to know that we actually can still win elections in this country. I'm not overly confident of that, so we'll see what happens. I'm just realizing too, as always, I forgot a single state. That one would be Hawaii, so there you go. Hawaii is obviously safe blue. Okay, on from Wisconsin, moving on to Ohio. Um, next up, we have. Uh, sorry, I lost my spot. Ohio, yes. Uh, Bernie Moreno versus Sherrod Brown. See, this one is really tightened up. Uh, Brown was leading by five to seven points in the polling earlier this year. The most recent po- uh, polling from WAPO, so not exactly a right wing. Margin of error, three and a half. Uh, 1,002 likely voters. Brown leads by just one. The fact is Trump's going to win this state by 7 to 12 points, somewhere that I think. For Brown to overperform that much, I'd be impressed. Um, you see the past uh, results here. He won by 6 in 2012, really good, uh, 2018 6.4, which is a really good year for Democrats. I just don't know that I see um, 
him polling or uh, perform overperforming as much as he did in tw- it, sorry lost my train of thought there. Uh, Brown, if he only leads by six, if he only won by six points in twenty twelve, six point four in twenty eighteen, I just don't see how he's going to increase that margin of victory. Um, or sorry, not increase the margin of victory. I don't see how he'd overperform Trump's margin of victory that much. So if Trump wins by eight or nine points in Ohio, I just don't see how Bernie, uh, sorry, Sherrod Brown beats Bernie Moreno there. So I do think this seat is going to flip there. Um, and I'm not even sure it's going to be a tilt margin. There'll be a one and a half point. Let's go ahead, because you know I like to be conservative. So let's go ahead and say Ohio is a tilt Republican state, but it could even be in the lean margin. But I'm feeling more confident that Bernie Moreno is going to pull this out. Let's say... It is a tilt Republican state, just like that we have the majority. Okay, moving on to, let's see what's up next, the state of Michigan. Okay, so we have Alyssa Slotkin here running against Mike Rogers, former congressman, not the rhino congressman Mike Rogers, who's currently in Congress, former congressman Mike Rogers. Look at the way he's closed the gap here. As as each candidate, uh, we get close to the election, each uh, candidate's name recognition gets higher. You see they're, they're both pulling higher and higher, and Rogers really closed the gap recently. Since September 29th, you see, it's really gotten closer. It's down to just a, what is that, a 1 point, yeah, 1.9 um, margin here, that insider advantage poll uh, showing 800 likely voters, just one point lead for Slotkin, 950 likely is from the Hill, shows uh, 5. Quinnipiac, Trafalgar both show a tie. So, I mean, and I'm not sure what this one is. Looks like maybe a local one, Michigan news source. However... Michigan could be very close uh, in the Senate race. This is one of those rare scenarios where I think, um, and you see how it's gotten closer there over time, I think that um, this could be one of those rare cases where the Senate candidate might even outperform the presidential candidate on their public side. Uh, so I'm not inclined to say that Michigan is going to be a toss-up. As of now, I think... I think I'm going to say that it still tilts towards Slotkin. I've heard that she's a pretty decent candidate. I'm not seeing that myself. But regardless, um, if Harris wins Michigan, it would be very difficult for Mike Rogers to win it. But it seems like he's running a really good campaign up there, despite uh, the GOP in Michigan, from what I've heard, uh, heard being in shambles. Huh, reminds me of Virginia, but that's a story for a different time. So... I am going to say that Michigan still tilts Democrat, but I'm not super confident about that, and we could absolutely see uh, Mike Rogers pulling out there, but let's say it tilts Dem for now. Okay, moving on to Pennsylvania, Bob McC- uh, Dave McCormick sorry, versus Bob Casey. Uh, you see here it's a 3.9-point lead for Casey, not as big as I thought he'd lead. That's another race where it's tightened over time. You see the trend here. McCormick was pulling way down. He's tightened it up, which is it's standard as you get closer to Election Day. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you see the uh, yeah the trend here. Casey was kind of pulling up near double digits even, and it's really closed the gap. So uh, on McCormick's part, I do think Trump's going to win Pennsylvania as of the time of this recording. So I really don't know. Bob Casey's a really good candidate, and historical overperformer. If this was just a Democrat versus a Republican, and it was an, if put it this way, if it was an open seat, and we were seeing these numbers, I would say toss up. Since it's Bob Casey, I think I've also got to go tilt blue there, and I think you see there the blue wall states uh, stay as a blue wall for the Senate, although all three are very close and any three could flip. I do think the GOP uh, right now is, obviously they're on the attack, they're on the offensive, and the Democrats on the defense, but right now I think the Democrats are doing a good enough job of defending those states to where, per the polling I'm seeing, which is about all the data I have to go off of, I think we're going to see these states tilt blue for now, but... At Michigan, I would be inclined to put as a toss-up if I was allowing myself toss-ups on this map. I'll probably do one more presidential election map prediction and one more Senate map prediction right before Election Day. Um, so we may see uh, me do some toss-ups in the next one. But for now, let's move on to Arizona. Carrie Lake versus Ruben Gallego. Lake, uh, those fears that many people had about her being unpopular seem to be um, uh, coming true. She's losing. It's one of those few races where the polling is not tightening up. It's getting worse for her. Now, here's the deal. Trump wins Arizona, I think, by a high lean margin, if it's legit, somewhere between two to three and a half points. I know it's kind of broad, but somewhere in there. But I think Lake's going to underperform. I don't think she's going to overperform. And I think she's going to underperform by several points. So I think we have another tilt blue state here. Carrie Lake, 
only lost her gubernatorial election by 0.2 points. So I'm not sure why everyone says she's so incredibly unpopular. But the polling does seem to be bearing that out now. So basically, right now, the GOP has a one, uh, one seat majority here in terms of their one seat over 50. It's a three seat majority, technically. But they're only one seat over 50. So they'd really like to capture Montana, which is where John Tester is defending his state. And here's where Tim Sheehy is trying to go on the attack. He's gotten a lot of money and a lot of outside funding. And from what I've heard, is running a pretty decent campaign, or what it seems anyway. And the polling would bear that out after Tester initially led the polling. It's not going to show me the graph, it appears this time. Uh, you see here, even as recently as, yeah, March, uh, Sheehy, uh, Tester was leading, sorry. And it's just been uphill from there for Sheehy. He's pulling now on the high single digits. New York Times, Sienna, show him ahead. Uh, Remington, Fabrizio, Rasmussen is a good one. There, I show him up seven. So I think this one's going to be pretty safe, and Trump's going to win Montana by 20 points or more. Uh, so for Tester to overperform that would be incredibly impressive. So I think that uh, his electoral juggernautness, if I may be permitted to use the term, is kind of coming uh, to a close. I don't think he's going to be good enough to overcome it this time, overcome the deficit of, of the Republican presidential candidate winning there. He only won by a little over three points in 2018, which is a wave year for Dems. And so not only am I going to say this goes to the GOP, I'm actually going to put Montana as a likely GOP seat. Admittedly, low likely. I think Tester will still put up a good fight, but I think we see roughly a four-point victory there for Tim Sheehy. So there you go. Um, that is the electoral map for the Senate. Republicans with a 52-48 majority. I know you've seen a lot of people predicting this exact same result, but that does seem to be the most likely for me. I think our chance of taking Nevada and Arizona are becoming a little bit slimmer our chance of taking the three blue wall states are getting a little bit better. So who knows what's going to happen? Let's find out. And yeah, like I said at the beginning, I'm ready for this election season to be over because I'm tired of it. I've got a lot of local races I want to focus on here in 2025 and uh, kind of tired of this uh, <laughs> election news cycle, to be completely honest. But let me know how you feel about it. Let me know who you think is going to regain the Senate. And while we're at it, tell me who you think is going to win for president. And if you really want to get uh, interesting, tell me who and by what margin you think which party will control the House of Representatives down in the comments. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.